6C70S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known the agenda of this meeting to Asbury Park Press and the new coaster on December 15, 2017 by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the City Clerk on December 15, 2017. Our mission statement, the Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call please. Ms. Breach? Here. Mr. Grillo? Here. Ms. Jones? Mr. Ladaraka? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Mr. Pinckney? Here. Mr. Saunders? Here. Ms. Etienne? Here. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Here. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, tonight, I would like to direct your attention to a presentation from our director of student services and her team, Dr. Christy Howard. Good evening. Good evening. Um, tonight we're going to present the uh, SSDS report, previously called the EVVR report. Um, actually, I have to hand, hand something out to you all. I'm going to hand you a summary of, of the report and the, its findings. The presentation that I'm going to show you is just the numbers. So, um, the EV, excuse me, the SSDS report um, com now, since 2017, has combined the previous HIV report as well as the um, EVVR ER report. So it's a little different. So previously, you would have the violence, vandalism, and things like that. But now, they only have two categories. It's the um, incidents, which includes the violence, vandalism, and the HIBs. And so now, uh, and you also have the other. So other are all the incidents that results in removal from, from the classroom, which means you're in school and out of school suspensions. So that's what the, I'll keep going, go back. That was the, that's what the other category is. Now also the difference between um, the other category um, in the previous other category, you didn't have other category for general education students. You would have other category just for special education students. So now, the other category will include all students in school and out of school suspensions. So, I have a, I broke it down by schools. So Asbury Park High School, as you see, nine incidents, and that's just for uh, violence and vandalism. Um, and 57 incidents of other and zero hips. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you. You can see it. If you have any questions, just um, let me know. But so there's a total of 41 incidents for the district. And again, the period one runs from September to um, 2017 until December 2017. And then there were 122 incidents. So that would be inclusion of out of school and in school suspensions. And a total of three hits. Now, again, I broke it down by school. So, if you compare last year, 2016, 2017, period one, um, you had 21 incidents, and now, from September to, uh, excuse me, to December, you had nine. 
And so that's a difference of 12. So we went down in that category by 12. Um, now, if you look at period two, I have an asterisk by 2017, 2018, because again, it's May. So the period from two goes from January until June. So right now, we have an increase of 10 uh, from last year. Again, the other categories, your in-school and out-of-school suspensions, um, I put an asterisk there because if you looked at the data from last year, it would not include um, the general ed students. So it was much less because it only included the special education students. So if I went back and added them all up. So we had 16 um, last year in the um, first period. Now we have 57. Uh, so that was an increase in 41. And last year, um, period two, we had 57 and currently of 78. Um, and last year, our HIBs, we went down. We have none for period one, and right now we have two for period two. MLK Middle School. So again, last year we had 12 incidents for period one. This year we had 27 incidents, with an increase of 15. Uh, period two of last year, we had eight incidents. So far, we have 28 incidents. Um, other, last year we had 18 in-school and out-of-school suspensions, and this year we have 50, 54, period one. Uh, last year, period two, we had 41, and currently we have 48. And the HIBs, we went up um, two in period one, and we went down so far in period two. Now, again, I'm not going to read all the elementary schools, but really I know that most of the, lar the larger focus was on the elementary, excuse me, the high school and the middle school. But again, um, if you want to have any questions, just let them ask and I'll, I'll take questions. Go ahead. Um, one of our other, go back. Barack Obama. Another one of our, well, our elementary school that we, we've been focusing on with regard to behavior was Barack Obama. So last year they had, um, period one, they had 16 incidents. This year they only had five. Um, last year they had, um, period, period two, they had one incident, and that went up by four. We had five so far. With regard to um, suspensions, they don't have in-school suspension in um, elementary schools, so it's just strictly out-of-school suspensions. Period one of last year, they had 15. And now, uh, period one this year, we had 11. And period two, last year, we had five. And that went up by five, so we have 10. Alicia. And again, Thurgood Marshall, um, nothing really significant. If we look now, there, there's six incidents in period two. So um, that's a little concerning. Now what I did was a three-year comparison. So like I said, previously with the vandalism and violence and HIBs, it was a little different, so I had to go back and add all of those up to get a, compar a trend, a comparison with regard to incidents and other. So in 2015, 2016, we had 30 incidents. Last year we went up to 52, and now we're, we're, we went down 41 incidents this year for period one. And with regard to the suspensions, 2015, 2016, we had 137. Last year, period one, we had 50. And this year, we had 122. Last year, excuse me, 2015, 2016, we had one hip. Last year, we had two, and this year, we had seven. So I, again, I handed you a, a summary uh, with regard to what we're looking at, and to give you a breakdown of where our incidents are occurring. That's what's most important for us to look at, because most of our incidents are occurring in the classroom. So when we look at those, those trends, whether it's in the cafeteria, the hallways, or the classrooms, we know that now there's certain things we have to do with bringing in, again, social, emotional uh, learning and skills for our teachers. If they're happening in the classroom, we know that our teachers are uh, having an issue with classroom management. So we would like to bring in programs to help our teachers um, get better at classroom management. That also segues into our next presentation. So I'm not deeply concerned with the incidents. 
I'm deeply concerned more or less with the other because that's your in-school and out-of-school suspensions. And so what we plan on doing is changing our policy so that we will be utilizing our alternative learning lab, which is at the high school, we have alternative learning lab where our most disaffected students go there, not only to do yoga, they go there to have uh, deal with conflict resolution, they go there for anger management. And so if we can infuse the uh, mindful, excuse me, the mindful room is what they have at the middle school. So instead of suspending a child, um, we can, instead of suspending them, we can utilize the alternative learning lab so that we can get the child centered, focused, and back in the classroom. So um, anyone have any questions? Yes. How many of those incidences are, are repetitive for a person? When you think of somebody that has a chronic you know, problem, and they, you have to count every incident. So yes. I don't know what percentage, you, you, did you figure out like a certain percentage of? We did it for last year at the high school. This year we haven't done it. We're gonna wait until the year's over so we can have a, a cumulative. But I can, I can tell you this much. 80% of the incidents is just the occurring by 20% of the students. So that's the reason why we utilize the alternative learning lab in the mindful room because we, we have a list in every building which are top 25 disaffected students. And we schedule them to go to the alternative learning lab and we schedule them to go to the mindful room. And um, to be honest with you, I know in the high school it has reduced. Those students have, some of them rotate out so they're not there for the full year. So they rotate out. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because sometimes people look at the data and they're like, oh my God, you had 122 kids that are out of control or something where actually it's a couple of kids that may have you know, problems. Yes, and you're correct. Any more questions? Okay, so like I said, that's going to segue into our next presentation with, by Alicia Delorenzo. Thank you. Good evening. So I just want to first start off by saying thank you because the stuff and the, 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 the components of the program that I will explain tonight is because you have already supported what we already have going on in the district. And um, we have a vision of where to head, but because your support already was there and the foundation has been set, we've been able to make some great strides. So I just want to first start off by saying that um, Social emotional learning, if we pulled this room, everybody would probably have a different definition of what it is. And so just to be very brief about what that definition is, it's basically a set of skills, these five skills up here that are a little difficult to see. Uh, Self-awareness, responsible decision making, um, relationship skills, social awareness, and self-management. And when students and adults are taught these skills, they have not only um, access to better academics for the students, but also emotional literacy. So um, these are life skills for success in life and in, in school. New Jersey has adopted, last year they adopted social emotional competencies. They are just competencies right now. Um, some schools and some states have adopted these as standards, but without funding, New Jersey has decided that it's best at right now to just make these competencies. So they're a guideline, but what is really exciting to know is that last week at a, a state meeting, the uh, Title I funding is budgeting, we should be budgeting for social emotional uh, consultation, social emotional um, uh, training for teachers and staff, and social emotional uh, tools and resources. And so that's re recommended from the state that we start budgeting for these things so that we can address the social emotional needs of our students. What we're doing that is unique and different in Asbury Park, which is why people from Atlantic City all the way from, from Atlantic City to East Orange are coming to visit our district, is that we are leading the way in social emotional learning in the state. And what we've done is we've created a wonderful synergy of not only social emotional learning, but also mindfulness. So what we know about social emotional learning is that it increases pro-social behavior, decreases those negative behaviors, and also decreases um, stress and test anxiety. But what, we learn, what we're learning about how mindfulness impacts education is that it increases um, compassion and attention, focus, cognitive functioning, empathy, and emotional regulation, as well as decreasing 
uh, PTSD symptoms, depression, and anxiety. So when we pair these two things together, we have a powerful combination and, and formula for addressing our students' needs. Our students' needs are unique because when we're talking about trauma, we're talking about the, the brain being changed. We're talking about learning that is being uh, stunted because students are in that fight or flight. And so we need something different to address our unique problems here, okay? Our unique um, discipline issues. Because it's not a result of kids behaving badly or being bad kids, it's a result of something that's happened to them that has changed the way they learn, changed the way they react, and changes the way they interact with their peers and, and adults. So speaking about the, the data, this is just some of our statistics um, that we know about in regards to students. Because some will say that this is not a school issue. Addressing trauma, addressing mental health is not a school issue, but I disagree. When one in five students have a mental health disorder by the age of 18, and 80% of them go untreated, we have an issue. It's, f it's flooding into our hallways, it's flooding into our classrooms, and mental health issues are flooding into our learning. So this is a school issue, and we, it's, an, it's our moral imperative to address um, this so that our students can learn and succeed in life. So if you look, anxiety, onset is age, 18, uh, age 8, mental health conditions, onset is age 14. 22% of youth experience severe mental health disorders in a given year. More than 60% of young adults with a mental illness were unable to complete high school. And 1 in 12 high school students have attempted suicide. This gets worse, and the, the reaction to these mental health issues are more severe and habitual when you're dealing with trauma, which we can all agree that our students are facing, whether it's the big T's of watching someone be murdered, which is what some of our students have witnessed, to little T's like moving and relocating. These are all of the experiences that our students come to the table with. So when we look at that data that Dr. Howard was speaking about, this is that 80-20 rule. So 80% of our problem was coming from 20% of our population. And 80% was right about where fighting injuries involved over. So that's our 80% of those uh, discipline problems. In 2015-2016, in we had 1,002 suspension days at the high school. So we looked at this a little bit deeper, and we saw that 477 were caused by 25 students. Those 25 students were the students that got the intervention of the one day a week mindfulness, yoga, meditation, and social emotional learning. Their discipline decreased by over 50% the following school year. And this year, those students that were in the alternative learning lab are not even on our radar for discipline. They are not even, you know, um, an issue as far as our discipline goes. So we know that what we were doing, what we're doing is working. Now our, our goal is to expand on that. So this was basically how we rolled out 2016, 2017. Um, starting in September, we reviewed the data, we beautified the school, and we built relationships. I won't read through all of that, but as you can see in October, we started our alternative learning lab. But something that's really key here is that we realized very quickly that our adults were just as dysregulated. Our students were going back into the classroom and they were regulating the, their emotions, and the adults in the building were not regulated and triggering that cycle happening again. So one thing I would say that we should have done at the onset was deal with our adults first. It's imperative that our adults understand what it means to teach and to, to interact with students when they're experiencing trauma, when they've experienced the, the, brains, uh, the change in their brain from poverty. So we started Wellness Wednesdays at the high school, which we want to continue throughout the rest of the district, um, providing information and exposure to the same practices that Michael and Rodney are giving our students, yoga and meditation and mindfulness. And so this year we rolled out more of a district-wide initiative of what that high school pilot looked like. And so these are some of the things, including having wellness teams at each building. What we'd like to do in the future is create a wellness lounge at each building for the staff, monthly professional de development. Right now we have yoga and Zumba after school for our staff. Um, at the elementary levels, there is a cohort of Every building has been trained in responsive classroom in a small cohort, and this year Obama was trained as an entire um, building. Students are, are um, over the intercom leading breathing activities, so 
two years ago, our students, students didn't necessarily know how to use their breathing to address their emotions and their emotional dysregulation. I can say that every school has addressed breathing and taught our students how to breathe. They know those breathing balls as soon as they see them. They've brought them home to their families and taught them how to breathe. And so it's really an integrative system. We can't punish our way out of trauma. We can't do the same old, same old that we've always done. We have to take a systemic approach that is very different. Um, so moving on to the middle school, the middle school started to model the same, that same interventions at the high school with our alternative learning lab. The mindful moment room is where students can come down to Rodney and Michael in each of their respective buildings and get re-regulated after 15 minutes. They go through a set series of activities to reflect on what happened, what was their part, regulate their emotion, and go back to class, right? We're also using restorative practices to support that. So when people say, we don't have time for social emotional learning, we have to get to academics, the truth is, is that we don't have time to not address social emotional learning. We don't have time to not focus on the emotional healing that our students need so that the learning can happen. Right. So I just want to share this video and then Michael and Rodney will take it from here. Can you hear that? Sedated sure. childhood trauma. She talked to Dr. Bruce Perry. He's the world's leading expert on early trauma. He's treated survivors of high profile events like the Columbine shooting. Here's a preview of Oprah's report. That very same sensitivity that makes you able to learn languages just like no. that as yeah. a little infant yeah. makes you highly vulnerable to chaos, threat, inconsistency. Well, that didn't work, but I can email it out to you. And what's really profound is that Uber talks about um, addressing trauma, and if we don't address the hole in the soul, we're missing the point. We're missing the mark, and we can't get to education, we can't get to academics if we don't address this. So I appreciate your time. It's a really quick overview, but I'm going to hand it over to Michael and Rodney to talk about the specifics of their program. Peace and love, beautiful people. Thank you for having us here. It's an honor to present our data of what we've been doing here this year to you and just understanding the larger impact as well as the micro impact of what we're working with each individual child. Wholeness and love, and again, gratitude for allowing us to come and present ourselves to you guys. It's an honor. We appreciate all that we do, and we're looking forward to showing with you guys what we've been doing in the schools as well as the community to support their wellness initiative and to make an impact that will help these children find their purpose in their life. So let's give us a second. Well, all the way, we'll just introduce ourselves. My name is uh, Brother Rodney. I am one of the co-founders of a nonprofit organization called Conscious Youth Development and Service. Peace and love again. My name is Michael, another co-founder, and uh, just a twin, soul twin. You know, they, they get us mixed up all the time in the schools, but it's all good, all good. Beards and bald heads, that's a good recipe. So <laughs> so just real quick, just talk about our, our mission of who we are as an organization. We've been in this community about three and a half years, uh, really just the last year since we both left our full-time jobs and really went full-fledged with the organization and just really building and expanding on something we're passionate about and something we believe will heal the trauma of Asbury Park. And our mission as an organization is to prepare and create future leaders through holistic intervention. And we focus on three components of that, the body, the mind, and the soul. And Brother Rod's gonna just break that down really briefly. Oh yeah, and one thing is, first and foremost, when you think about dealing with these issues, it's not just only working on a mental level. When you see the research and information, your diet is a crucial part with allowing these kids to function on a high level. And when you start to realize kids who have a high processed food diet, how does that develop the brain to focus, to concentrate, to deal with the difficult emotions? So what we do is we emphasize having a healthy diet, plant-based diet, natural food, more importantly, real food. So when the kids come into our space, we're always making sure that we emphasize that and we provide that to them to make sure that they can see what it's like to nourish themselves on their level. And after we bring balance to our body, it's bringing balance to our minds. It's not just a physical diet, but it's also a mental diet of what it is that we're consuming regularly. And when you see the trends of what is the music that they're playing, you know what I'm saying? What is the TV that they're watching, the conversations that they're having, who are they following on social media, you realize all those are going to influence their mental state and how they, how they act as a character. I ask all the time, why do you dress that way? Why do you talk that way? And they say that, oh, that's just 
just who I am. But we realize that's the program society is spoken within the mind. So as we raise their awareness to be more conscious and mindful of these things, they could become to realize who it is that they truly want to be and what it is that aligns with themselves and what they're consuming. Also, the last part is the emotional state, and that is what we emphasize is the heart and the soul. And Mr. Lorenzo broke down dealing with trauma, and we're in an educational setting. So when you recognize when individuals who are operating off that fight or flight state, there's a part of the brain called their amygdala that puts you in a state where you want to protect yourself. So whenever that part is triggered, the area of your brain that requires for you to focus, to concentrate, and to utilize your executive functions gets shut down. And I realize a lot of these kids, it's not that they're not intelligent, it's that they're having so much that they're holding on to internally that their brain's not allowing them to process the information to their full potential. And once we realize through yoga, mindfulness, social emotional learning, and bringing those tools together, allow them to bring themselves back into balance, it will allow for their light to shine, harmonizing their body, their mind, and emotions. And that is our mission, and we're doing that through school-based programs, as Park, high school, middle school. We've also been in over 13 different schools across Monmouth County in the state of New Jersey within the past year. We have a very heavy influence in the community. We have a free summer program that we do for the youth to emphasize what we're trying to do. We also do community events, community meditations, yoga, and open mic night as well. We do workshops, presentations, and just trying to make a, a whole approach to dealing with the issues that we're facing within the community. So. And I'll just mention, too, because we look at the statistics and we don't see the full picture. You know, so Brother Rod talked about the body and what we're eating and putting in our body. I see kids pull, being pulled out of classrooms because of their behavior. And I ask them, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, I'm with the chef fields. I got some candy, some chips. And you wonder why their minds are so scattered. If you're having that 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, how's your mind going to function the rest of the day? You know, you wonder why these kids can't sit still in the classroom and they're causing disruption. They're not in control. You know, their mind cannot settle down because of the diet that they're consuming. You know, and I mentioned that too, uh, because we t bring the kids healthy foods, just let me grab those chips, let me put this away, and we'll give you something healthier. And just see how you feel, you know. Don't, don't judge what you see, but just see how you feel while you're consuming that food. And it makes a big difference, it makes a big difference. And we passed the previous slides, but we also hired two new conscious workers to help us in the schools. And what's important about that is one young man at, uh, Salvador Swain, he's a recent graduate of Asbury Park High School. He graduated about two years ago, right? Three years ago, he's growing up, he's growing up. But three years ago, man, and he's been a great light because he, the kids know him, they've seen him in school. You know, he's like, wow, Sal's this way now? And he said all he had to do was start breathing. You know, because he could have went one way in his journey, but he sat down with Brother Rod, his sophomore year, high school, and a few others, and just really learned how to go within himself and really deal with the issues he was facing. You know, and he's able to share that story with the students that we're talking to each and every day now. And it's, it's beautiful to have that light and that, that example of what the kids can be as young adults. So. Alicia was breaking down a little bit about the impact of trauma. I'm not sure if we have heard of the adverse childhood experiences. It's a study that's over, I think, about 25 years now, and it breaks down the impact of individuals who have been through trauma. And your A score is if you have any of those characteristics that are represented on the PowerPoint chart, it, it gives you one point. And they say if your A score is over a three, it begins to break down a lot of issues that affect your ability on a physical level, mental level, emotional level. And it also reflects your relationship to how long you'll live on this life. But when you hear the stories about what these kids are going through at early ages, coming home, parents are either not there, parents are drinking, they have to walk home, they're not having food at nighttime, they're dealing with a lot of different issues, have to babysit three or four of their siblings, and then they gotta come to school, they gotta take their work and take care of their tests and educate themselves. It's a lot for an individual to deal with. So all we're trying to do is present with them tools that they can utilize to give them some space, you know, just to be able to let go for a moment and show them that, man, they are really bright. A lot of times when these kids are failing, it's not because they're not intelligent, it's just they are overwhelmed internally and they don't know how to release that emotion in a safe way. And then that leads to risky behaviors. Now they're doing some kind of drugs. They smoke and they drink and they get involved in sexual activities. And it's not because these are things, they're looking for a way to just to cope and to feel pleasure. But when we show them that that same space can be found within themselves, it gives them alternative to route. And it's not saying it's gonna make every kid turn into a saint overnight, but it allows them to progress one step higher from where they're currently at in their own personal journey so that they could be a better individual within their own personal journey as well. So.
moving along to some of the services that we have provided in the high school. Alicia broke them all down, but we do the alternative learning lab. We've done two cohorts, and to seem to spend that quality time with the youth to allow them to go through the mindfulness, the social emotional learning, learn how to manage their emotions, to be self-aware, to become aware of how their energy affects the space around them, and to seeing how they realize there's a better version of themselves inside their own hearts that they could connect to. We've also done the conscious classrooms, at the moment, we've completed 16, and we're in the progress of completing nine more. And that's about 15, 20 minutes where I go into the classrooms, and we work on basic foundational mindfulness schools. I talked to Ms. Alicia, Dr. Howe, and asked me, how can I have the most impact in this building? And it's not just serving those kids who are labeled as issues, but it's creating a culture where all individuals in the school could understand that, how can this impact me? Because a lot of kids who even who are academically doing excellent, they still have things that they're holding on to as well, too. So showing them how to center themselves, how, how to regulate their emotions, and be more present with their thoughts so they can respond opposed to react will help create a culture within the building that helps bring a bigger impact of the wellness initiative. Also, we have the mindful moment. That is where kids can be checked in. I have a list of kids that they provide for me as well that I pull one-on-one. -on -one. And we just go through basic regulation techniques, things that they can help them when their heart's beating too quick. OK, what can I do? My mind's moving too fast. How do I create that space? And we go through this basic mindfulness techniques from a lot of the trainings that we've taken over a couple of years to help these kids realize things that I wish I would have known at their age. We are supporting the Gym Yoga and Meditation Institute coming in bi-weekly to provide the kids to reach as many kids in the school as possible to work with Lunchtime yoga and meditation every day in the lunchroom in room 122. Downstairs, the kids can come down with their food. We do at least five to 10 minutes of some practice, reflective activity, to allow any individual that wants to open up and receive part of the practice. We've helped out with the Health Academy. We had like a big test as well. Anything that Ms. Thomas, Ms. Lorenzo needs me to do, I provide the support to the system so that they can provide as many youth with ways. The gun violence talk with the governor. We did a little pre-meditation as well. Also worked with the soccer team and track team with Brother Daughter Son, where he wanted to provide his athletes to see how this could affect their performance on the field. Just trying to be an asset in any way possible. PLC staff development. And also work with the Dream Nine, doing a couple of mindfulness workshops with them inside their building. So. And here's some of the data. This is individual context. This doesn't cover me being in a conscious classroom, but on an individual level, we don't have a software that breaks down duplicated context. But overall, from December to May, I've seen 224 students that I have documented in terms of keeping track of the data. Our surveys ask them how they felt before when they come in. It's either sad, angry, neutral, or happy. And then it breaks down how they felt after they come in, based upon their experience from the different practices, from breathing exercise, movement, stretching, reflecting. And from the data, you can see that Coming in, we had 17% coming sad, angry, 49% coming in neutral, 34% labeling themselves as happy. And when they leave the space, 95% all have listed that they have felt better. And there's a lot of comments that reflect even deeper than the quantitative data that is represented on the, on the slide to show exactly what that experience was like. But the common factor was any individual that we have been able to sit down with has been able to have an experience where they created some space, they got some stillness, and allowed them to have a deeper connection with themselves and understanding themselves. And here's the middle school for Brother Mike. And a lot of services are replicated. There's just a little bit of a difference between the programs um, as far as the, the actual programs, how they're running. We found that being in the middle school, as soon as we were in there, they were receptive. You know, we didn't have to get them to buy into the yoga. They just thought, oh, that's something that the other people do. Uh, we don't do that here. We, they were really open to it. You know, and that's because previous connections in the community and just working with them. So it, it was almost like opening up the floodgates when we got into the middle school, and you'll see that reflected in the data. Uh, the month moment room, we have a space into the, in the middle school where kids can self-refer or teacher refer. And we found that it was a little slow early on with the teacher referral, but they really gained and uh, embodied the program where they are telling, like not even just kids who are acting up in the school, but just kids who were like, okay, David was, you know, he's very energetic, but today he's very distant. He's not talking to anybody, his head's down. I'm gonna just refer him to the mindful moment room to see if he can open up and talk to somebody. Um, so the mindful moment has been a tremendous success. That's why we used to the actions next to it. The alternative learning guys, like we talked about before, just set groups of kids, at the most at-risk kids who are coming to us weekly on a day in and day out basis. We have our conscious classroom. We haven't really done too much conscious classroom in the middle school. That's because the kids, and you'll see it in the data, have been coming to us on a consistent basis, like really like clockwork. And we find that the kids, when we're not in the room, or you know, even with security, because they're taking the disciplined kids to us instead of sending them to ACS, ISS, um, 
it's like it's almost like okay, it's like a disappointment, and we find that there's more chaos. Where security's knocking the door, was I'm in a classroom, and it's like okay, what can I do? You know, so juggling back and forth. But you'll see that in the data. Um, hopefully, it will make better sense. Lunchtime yoga. We just started that uh, about a month and a half ago. Um, we just rolled it out every day, so the kids have an option uh, during lunch to actually just find some peace because the teachers are saying that the kids are very chaotic coming back from lunch. So we're just gaining, giving them an opportunity to gain some peace before they go back into the classroom and sit down. We have our, our staff development, and that was really key in helping the, the teachers understand what's going on in the school, you know, and understanding the process because it was a lot of up in the air, what's going on, you know, kids cutting my class, but we got everything straightened out, worked with the administration, made sure the pass or referral system was in place and is working properly. We had a Ghana presentation, which is great because the kids in Ghana, um, they do the Ghana presentation, as you know. Um, we got to share what we were doing in the district. So we put a little, little presentation together as far as what we're doing, as far as yoga and meditation. We were able to make a common connection as considering yoga and meditation. Although it's Eastern, you know, a lot of people think of India, but a lot of it originates in Africa. So just making that connection and the Ghana kids were excited to see that we were over here meditating, doing yoga. And also with the, um, the international Chinese uh, students coming over. Uh, we hosted a whole meditation yoga. It was about 40 kids, uh, 40, 50 kids between the Asbury Park students and the Chinese students, where we actually not just did the yoga meditation, but we broke down cultural barriers and got a better understanding of each other. And uh, when I looked at the Asbury Park kids, I was like, wow, they're, they're learning a lot from these kids, you know? And we're both learning from each other, but it was good that everyone had that experience. And even the Chinese kids are like, oh, we can use some yoga back home. So it's all good, it's all good there. Um, so here's the data I talked about, the Mindful Moment Room. You see, to date, um, that's just the surveys we've collected, um, over 854 visits um, in the Mindful Moment Room. Um, Brother Rod broke down how we felt before and how we felt after. You see that a lot of it at the initially was kids who were coming when they were really stressed out, when they were really angry. And we find that as the program really became receptive and open in the middle school, kids understood their triggers. So they understood how to control it. It's like, you know what, I need a breather, I need to go to the mind moment room. You know, and you see a lot of kids actually helping to regulate themselves by actually just removing themselves from the situation. And what was really promising was like, some of the kids that we were working with, you seeing kids who were actually going back to the teachers and apologizing for cussing in their classroom, cussing at the teacher, and really just taking responsibility. And that's one of the SEL competencies. We want to make sure kids are accountable for the actions. Although they're coming to the mindful moment room, they're not just getting a free pass to leave class or leave the problem, but they're actually reconciling the problem and fixing it by going back to the teacher, going back to the other student and really working things out. And that's a beautiful thing. And you see here the data, you know, a majority of the kids are just leaving the room better, you know, and emotionally better is going to actually round out to being academically better. You know, I've had teachers in the middle school come up to me like, man, Nelson's been doing great, his attitude's a lot better, and his grades are improving. You know, he's now able to focus with a clear mind because if I have that anxiety in my mind, I'm not going to be able to focus in that classroom. And the kids are able to actually have a clear mind. And we didn't print it out for you, but we'll send it to you. But there's a lot of comments from the surveys that are showing, man, I'm able to, I've never been able to control my mind. I've never been able to clear my mind. And it just feels so peaceful. So the, the comments you see are amazing. But what's more amazing is when you see the kids and you see that ACES study, all those things, all those steps on the ACES study are being addressed in our program. So it's not just the top 25 kids. It's the kids who, who's not talking to anybody who is having suicidal thoughts coming to us. It's the kids who are able to like really just open themselves up and be like, man, I've been going through a lot. Okay, yeah, you're right over here. <laughs> but it's like our open mic, we got a little timer, wrap it up, wrap it up. But, <laughs> but the kids who are like on the edge of just an outburst and are able to come there and open up in a way they never have. And the stories you hear, the things we see are amazing and we're able to work with them. And we're using the wraparound support um, in the middle school where we're using all the other resources to make sure the child gets what they need when they are opening up in that way. So they have that, that person following up to make sure they're doing the assessment and working with the child, make sure nothing bad happens to that child. All right, so we're here, you know, and I, I give you the data and I, 
we wanted to make it known that we are here in Asbury Park and we're building the foundation. You know, we didn't just want to make sure we're, we're going to every other school. We want to make sure this is our foundation. This is what we believe in. This is the community we're from and the community that we want to work with. So that's why our community-based programs are in Asbury Park, just to make sure the adults can receive this as well, not just the kids, and just making sure it's a wraparound, a holistic, a holistic uh, program. Because it takes a, child, a village to raise a child, but the leaders in the village need to be balanced as well. So we're here just to build that connection and build that bridge and make sure from the school to the community, everyone is in balance, body, mind, and soul. So we thank you for your time, for your opportunity to speak. I hope that gave some more insight about what we're trying to bring and support. And it takes, it takes some time, but a lot of these kids, as you see them buy into the practice, the teachers, the staff, the faculty, you're seeing a shift that we don't see in many other districts that we've been to that don't have these put in place. And it's beautiful to see when we come back to Asbury how far ahead they are of dealing with the issues that are happening on a, on a nationwide level. From the suburban to urban schools, we're seeing similar issues, but not many schools have tools put in place to support their kids on an emotional level. So we're grateful to be here, and we hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the board members? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Alicia. Good evening. My report is as follows. Um, our monthly student enrollment has been consistent since October. Um, there have been some fluctuations over the months, but we are trending up as it relates to our student attendance. We've also been very consistent with our student populations by ethnicity and gender. Our student suspensions, as you just heard from our report, we still have a way to go. Uh, however, we are seeing the impact of what our ALL and our mindfulness programs are looking like. but. As was shared, when students are in trauma and we're still trying to work with them, the incidences of the same or repeat offenders uh, is what's reflected in our suspension report. But we are pleased that the number of students that are impacted have uh, continued to go down. And our enrollment for May has been fairly consistent as well. That completes my report. Thank you, Superintendent Mrs. Gray. And now I, according to uh, public participation, in accordance with board policy 0167, if you have a comment or a statement, please come to the lectern. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address. Thank you. Good evening. Connie Breach, 59 Third Avenue. I'm speaking today in reference to a private event that was held at the middle school on May 5th. The concern that was brought to my attention is the concern of residents in town, employees of the city, and employees of the school district that was conveyed to me and how this event was approved by the Board of Education. They were concerned with the fact that other organizations that are charged facility fees and maintenance fees, whereas this particular event, all fees were waived. There was also no insurance waiver on this event. I advised the individuals that I spoke with that I was unaware of the event that took place and it was the first time I heard about the event was the following Monday after the event. I was unable to provide an answer as to how the event took place without the following the proper policy of the board approval and also the use of facility fee forms and insurance waiver. To the best of my knowledge, those items were not provided. The same Monday night, I was sent an email saying that the event was approved and the facilities were waived. These fees were waived by the Board of Education and the approval of the Board President, and it was based on past practice. I was unaware of any past practices in my nine years as a board member, only one time that it was, this type of event was allowed at the middle school, and that was because it was a sudden death of a middle school teacher. The questions that were brought to my attention were, was there any use of facility fees, forms, and insurance forms filled out? What was the actual cost of this particular event to the school district and the taxpayers? It is also my understanding that additional staff was needed and provided as well as event cleanup and that the cafeteria was utilized 
without Sodexo being notified. And also, I was told that, this is what I was told, I wasn't there, that um, some items that were also utilized for takeout containers from the food that was provided by the event. I'm just deeply concerned, along with other residents, concerned about these individual actions that were taken with the possibility of compromising the board for future controversies and possible lawsuits down the road. If anybody can answer me, I don't know who approved this event. I'm just curious, so if someone asks, we have an answer, because I know it wasn't something that was asked for the whole board. So if anybody wants to provide that answer, I'd love to. And if anybody has an answer how much the cost was actually brought to the board for this event, if anybody has an estimate, or does anybody have a comment on that? Ms. Breach, yes, this was open during uh, public comment, and I'm not going to make a comment at this time about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, board. My name is April Sanders, um, Ocean Township. Um, Unfortunately, my uncle was tragically murdered on April 29th, 2018. And I would like to say, this is his two sons, um, Farah and Vajon Sanders. And on behalf of the family of Earl Everlasting Sanders, we want to thank those responsible for allowing the repast to take place at the middle school. Everlasting was a great businessman who loved his community at Asbury Park. He loved making people feel good about themselves, especially the youth. He not only provided haircuts to the community, he contributed contribu excuse me, he contributed tremendously and silently to several youth events, including Pop Warner and other youth projects. His hair salon was a home base that offered hope and help and healing to those who felt trapped. His legacy meant wealth of spirit, wealth of mind, and wealth of pocket. And from the help of his family, which is us, we will continue to instill vision and belief, especially to the youth, that all things are possible in his name. Thank you all. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? So now the public participation session is closed. State monitor's report, please. I'd just like re to report to the board that there has been a lot of um, talk in the state about the possibility of additional budget cuts that may be announced in June. Um, the numbers we don't have. Uh, we've heard any number of different numbers. And uh, this could be a, a serious uh, problem for the district. 
and preparation for that since it seems to be consistent that some kind of a cut is going to be announced. Uh, we are preparing and reviewing staff uh, and staff positions and uh, all of the administration has been notified that they are uh, under the obligation to review their own individual staff areas and be prepared because Mr. Hastings may have a very short window uh, of uh, announced reductions uh, if this uh, announcement comes late in June. So we are preparing a list. Uh, we are looking at all staff under the direction of uh, uh, Mrs. Gray and uh, Mr. Hastings and uh, we will be ready, we hope, for that announcement if it does come. It seems to be uh, pretty well understood since if, if you're watching the news, if you've been watching the news at all, uh, the governor has announced uh, so many shortfalls in so many areas that uh, he's already talking about a tax increase. So, um, you know, it, it only stands to reason that all of the different departments are going to, in Trenton, are going to have to look at their budgets and perhaps uh, sustain some kind of a cut. So that's what we've been working on. Thank you, Mrs. Morse. Uh, the approval of the Code of Governance, best practices. Mr. Hastings, no? Yes, Madam President, could we have a motion for item nine on A1? Second. Question. For adoption of the Code of Governance Best Practices, Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. I'd also like a motion to adopt the minutes on page uh, A110, A through D. Move. Moved by Mr. Ladaraka, second by Ms. Etienne. Question. Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. At this time, um, we'd like to uh, request a consent, a, a consent agenda for pages B1 to B11 and uh, including B12 as the agenda. B1 through B12, Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Abstain on the following B1, 2F, B2, 3A, B11, 24. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Motions carry. Whatever you're ready. Thank you. Could I get a motion for all items C1 number one through C5 number 12? Move. Question. Thank you. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. All items carry.
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Community, thank you for coming out. I hope you enjoy your holiday weekend. Make it a safe one. See you next month.